Hello, my name is Dr. Cheryl Gooden, and I'm a practicing anesthesiologist with a subspecialty in pediatric anesthesiology. Today, I'd like to share some insights into using the Miller-style video laryngoscopes. The techniques in this video are my own. You should always refer to the operations and maintenance manual prior to using GlideScope products. Video laryngoscopes are available in various formats hyperangulated, and more standard blade types such as Macintosh and Miller. Use of more traditional blade types such as a Miller could be useful when teaching direct laryngoscopy with more normal appearing airways or if you have a preference for traditional blade types. Overall, use of a video laryngoscope can lead to an improved view of the airway during intubation. I have found that sharing the live airway view helps those in the room to become more engaged in the intubation. This includes surgeons, nurses, and our students. Today, I'll be using a GlideScope Core video monitor with a Spectrum Miller video laryngoscope on a pediatric mannequin. With a Miller video laryngoscope, the technique is the same as with a non-video straight blade laryngoscope. When using a Miller video laryngoscope, I will typically use an endotracheal tube with a malleable stylet, although it may not be required in all cases. A stylet simply adds stability to the endotracheal tube throughout the intubation to help you optimize the chance of intubation success with the first attempt, especially in rapid sequence intubation. I usually bend the malleable stylet slightly after inserting the endotracheal tube. It may also be useful to already have a stylet in place in case you choose to switch to a hyperangulated blade. In that case, you can simply adjust the curvature of the stylet to match the hyperangulated blade shape. Position the patient in the sniffing position to align the three axes per standard practice. In this first step, Looking at the patient, scissor the mouth and insert the blade on the right side and sweep the tongue to the left as you advance the blade. Continue to look into the patient's mouth until the tip of the blade reaches the base of the tongue. At this point, you will transition your eyes to the video monitor. In step two, look at the video monitor. During this step, while advancing the blade, identify the epiglottis and lift it with the tip of the blade in order to expose the vocal cords. Ensure that you do not position the blade too deep, which could result in partially obstructing the glottic opening and impede endotracheal tube insertion. Ideal blade positioning should be deep enough to manage the epiglottis, but not so deep that you lose the advantage of the panoramic view that the camera provides. Optionally, you can also position the tip of the blade in the vallecula and use a small lift to expose the glottic opening. This may be useful for a stubby epiglottis that is difficult to trap under the blade tip. In step three of the procedure, return your eyes to the patient's mouth. You will be inserting the endotracheal tube into the mouth. Introduce the endotracheal tube and then as the tip of the endotracheal tube passes the base of the tongue, look back at the video monitor. In step four of the procedure, looking at the monitor, advance the endotracheal tube through the vocal cords under direct or indirect view. You may want to use both. If using a cuff endotracheal tube, confirm the ideal depth and positioning of the endotracheal tube in the trachea. Finally, I recommend keeping the video laryngoscope in place during removal of the stylet from the endotracheal tube. As always, make sure that you're holding the endotracheal tube in place during removal of the stylet. The Miller video laryngoscope may be useful for clinicians that may not be familiar with hyperangulated video laryngoscope techniques. The straight blade technique is easily transferable from direct laryngoscopy to Miller video laryngoscopy.